Welcome back to the Source Garage. This is the beginning of the ultimate wheel cleaner testing, and this is gonna be episode one, just an introduction uh, to all the testing that's gonna be going on, and an in-depth breakdown of uh, essentially what iron is like when it gets into the clear coat on your rims and the process that it takes to actually remove that, since that's what generally people are most concerned with when you look at wheel cleaners is how effectively is it gonna remove the iron that's in the contaminants or in the clear coat uh, which is different from obviously what's on the, the rest of your car. So I'll zoom in here and I'll walk through this whole process and uh, all the experiments we're gonna be doing with all the other wheel cleaners. So to walk through what actually is happening here, so I have a little diagram drawn up. So consider the bottom here, the clear coat uh, on your rim. It's not completely flat. It's got divots, valleys, uh, obviously that you can't really see just looking at it with your eye. Say your brake pad, uh, obviously inside your wheel. And when you brake, your brake pad has iron in it of some kind that will come off in a dust or powder, and these little particles will get embedded in your clear coat down here. And then the iron also reacts to oxygen that's in the air to form iron oxide or rust, essentially. And it's very jagged and it's stuck into your clear coat, and you can't just come in with a, a general soap and wipe it off. Now, if you have a coating or something that's obviously gonna make it uh, stick a lot less than what it would to just normal clear coat uh, but we'll get into that with a whole nother video just assume you don't and this is normal here so now you've got this really embedded iron oxide in your wheel and this is just going to continue to embed itself and be tougher and tougher to remove and it looks unsightly it's brown it's spotty it's all over so we want to get rid of this right so what do we need to actually go in and get rid of it a wheel cleaner of some kind so typically in a wheel cleaner I uh, say typical because this is not every single recipe. I've gotten as many uh, MSDSs as I possibly can to get my hands on and try and figure this out, but I'll say this is typical. Uh, ammonia, detergents, other cleaning acids, and thioglycolic acid in some form. Sodium seems to be the most common. So this is the acid that actually uh, breaks down the iron. So this is the iron remover. This is what really smells bad. You also have detergents in there to help with cleaning, acids to help with cleaning, uh, oxalic acid. Typically, this has been the most common. And then ammonia is a stabilizer uh, to help uh, stabilize this acid so it has a better shelf life in the bottle. Anyway, thioglycolic acid is what you need to react with the rust. So when this comes into contact with your rust here, you're going to form a ferric thioglycolate. Now this is the red purple this is the, the bleed you'll see like running down um, that everyone's looking for, and this is water soluble. So once you get this reaction to happen, you have the bleeding, uh, that's with the detergents and other acids, and then you throw water on it, you help wash everything away. So you get the reaction to break down the iron right, and then you have these cleaners, detergents, and acids come in to help actually wash uh, everything off the wheel. So that's what's actually happening, what we're looking for, and I'll go through the experiments now of what we're gonna break out and show and compare all these. All right, so what am I gonna actually do with all the wheel cleaners I have uh, as far as testing? So I wrote out a small list here. I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera, but I'll read through it. So cling pH, iron dissolving, cleaning, sprayer, uh, corrosiveness, cost, smell, MSDS, and color. Uh, so this is my starting list of everything I wanna find out and do experiments on. So cling, I wanna know how well does whatever I'm spraying uh, stay to where I'm spraying it essentially. So think about if you have something that's an extremely runny liquid and it's not even misting, you shoot a little jet, right? It'll hit that and then just run right down. And it's not gonna stick to where you're spraying it and react to it. Ideally, you would want something that's gonna come out in kind of a light uh, mist sort of coat an area and stay there so that way it's actually reacting and doing everything that we just talked about that we want to in a proper cleaner. So I'm gonna have some kind of, I think I have some sheets of acrylic that I can spray these different uh, cleaners onto and see how uh, viscous they are and if they stick or just run down. Um, that's one test I wanna do. pH, I'm just simply gonna measure the pH of all these just out of curiosity and see if any uh, conclusion can be drawn out of how stuff performs from there. Um, Iron oxide dissolving, so rust dissolving. So I actually got a bag of rust. Uh, I have a whole bunch of stacks of Petri dishes here. So I'm going to take all these uh, and fill them with the different cleaners and put the rust in them in different quantities and do some different experiments to see how they react. What actually dissolves, stays dissolved, 
Uh, a lot of the wheel cleaners won't even have the thioglycolic acid in them. They won't actually uh, be, they're not designed for that. And some may claim like, oh, I'm the best wheel cleaner ever, but you literally have nothing in there that's gonna get out the iron, which you don't necessarily have to, right? If you're doing continuous maintenance and have a coating or something like that. Anyway, that's the point of the iron testing and why I have that stuff. General cleaning. Now this is probably gonna be the longest, most drawn out, most subjective part of the test. What I'm gonna do is I've got my truck, my car, got my girlfriend's car, and get some other cars. I'm gonna pull the wheels off, divide the wheels into a whole bunch of different sections, probably like eight or maybe like 16 um, per wheel, and then spray the cleaners in like, think of a tiny strip, agitate them, spray them off uh, one at a time. So I can see side by side as I go through all these cleaners, how effective are they at actually cleaning? And I'm gonna try and make it as fair and consistent as possible using the same size section, use like one spray, use the same brush, light agitation, spray it off uh, to really try and get a uh, on video exactly how well everything cleans. And that may be the most important test of all of this to see them side by side in as many uh, situations as possible to see how they actually work. I'm gonna look at the sprayers. Uh, it kind of goes along with the cling is the sprayers, is, is it a junk like, uh, like you know, the generic black uh, sprayer heads that a lot of places use that are very, they leak a lot, they squeak, they're not very comfortable, they may not spray the best, they may not have different settings on them. So sprayer counts a lot in my mind if I have to buy a product and I'm not putting it into my own bottle, which I, I typically wanna do, but that's something important to consider and we're gonna look at probably at the same time as the cling test. Corrosiveness, so, there's a lot of different chemicals that go into these products and I'm, along with the petri dishes I want to put uh, just like a nut or bolt something coated in zinc uh, like you would find on a car and just set it in there and see what happens. Is it going to eat away at it, corrode it? Is that something you need to be concerned with if you're spraying all up under your wheel or possibly getting to your undercarriage with this stuff? Is it actually a, a corrosive hazard, something you would need to be worried about by any chance? Uh, cost, obviously a huge one. I'll provide the costs and cost per milliliter of everything. And I was gonna try and do an estimation of how much you would need to use to like clean a wheel. Uh, right, certain products when you spray them, kind of going back to the sprayer and the clean test, or does it spray on and gloop to one spot and it takes you 30 sprays to get around a wheel or can you coat it in 10, right? And how much product have you consumed? And that really, puts into perspective differently cost for certain products. So I gotta figure out exactly how I wanna balance that out. Uh, smell, so what kind of smell does it have? If it is scented or does it just straight smell like death from uh, the thioglycolic acid in there? MSDSs, I'll provide as many as I can. Right now, I really have only been able to get my hands on half. That's not something that has to be uh, publicly given out with all these products. And I've been e emailing manufacturers even and haven't gotten many responses, honestly. Uh, and lastly, the color, if you like to put stuff in your own bottle like I do, you may want to know what the color of this stuff is if it's just in a black bottle. Uh, so I'll have samples of that obviously pulled out so you can see the color. So that's everything that I plan on doing with this. Uh, I'm going to try and start doing it, hopefully not this coming weekend, but the next weekend, pulling the tires off my car and starting with the cleaning test. Um, and after that, in the background, I'll be working on some of these others like cost, that's just research. And then I'll have a series of tests with the iron and the Petri dishes, and I'll show you all that, what everything looks like. And if you wanna see something similar to this, uh, I think I mentioned it in my last video I did, uh, Forensic Detailing did a whole video that I'll try and link below uh, on fallout removers. He did a lot of the stuff with the Petri dish and his own cleaning experiments, but specifically just looking for fallout removers on paint and wheels and he only did it with about 10 products but that was kind of the inspiration for some of the testing here it's a really great watch where he goes through the same kind of stuff here too so if you stuck through all this thanks for watching please uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all the stuff that's coming up and please leave comments or suggestions for anything that you have uh, for stuff i should test or you want to maybe see done differently that i throw in since i'm not doing this right now i'm definitely going to be reading all the comments to look for any more ideas so if you've been following along, thanks for watching.